Good morning, Jeffers friends. We're here to talk about your pre-breeding supplies. Have a few vaccines here. The Bovishield Gold and the Cattle Master Gold. Both of these are what I would consider complete vaccines. They have your basic five plus leptos and harjo. These are more for if you've given your basic five in a separate shot and you just need to add on your leptos, your vibrio, your harjo, any other reproductive diseases that you'd like to include in your program. You need to remember that if you have not given vaccines for those diseases, you need to give yourself enough time before breeding season that you can get both the first shot and the second shot in before breeding season starts. So you're probably looking at at least six weeks before breeding season you need to be thinking about if you're up to date on your vaccine. We also don't want to forget your trick vaccine. A lot of people just think about bulls when they think about trick. You need to vaccinate the bulls and the cow herd and you should really be vaccinating your bulls with all of these other whole herd health vaccines as well. As long as we're talking about vaccines, don't forget your cooler when you order your vaccines. Even when it's cold outside, some of y'all live places that it's cold enough you need to worry about your vaccines freezing and you actually need the cooler to protect your vaccines from freezing. Freezing of vaccines is actually worse than your vaccines getting too warm in transit. Once your vaccines have been frozen, they are ruined. The next thing that came to mind as far as pre-breeding supplies is you want to make sure you order your cedars far enough ahead of time. You don't want to go to order them and need to use them and they're on back order or we don't have the quantity that you need because now is the time of year when everybody's ordering their cedars. We have them for cattle and we have them for sheep. We also have the cedar putter inner as I like to call it. I think the technical name is cedar inserter. As long as we're talking about cedars, one of the other things you need to think ahead on is if you're going to need prostaglandins, remember those are a prescription item and you'll need to talk to your veterinarian about helping you out with those because those are a prescription. Uh, the other thing you might want as long as you are talking about putting in cedars and giving shots, you'll probably want to get some paint sticks so you can mark who you've done and who you haven't. Makes identifying those animals a little bit easier if there's some in your herd that you're not going to be doing all at the same time. Another good thing to pick up is a scrotal tape. You want to make sure that those bulls, those rams, those whatever it is that you know that you're turning out, you want to make sure that they have ample scrotal circumference to be able to get the job done. Just because it looks big enough doesn't mean it is big enough. You'll also want to pick up some disinfecting solution. The chlorhexidine disinfecting solution is good. Um, you'll want to make sure that you're keeping your cedar inserters clean and making sure your animals are cleaned off adequately. Once you've pulled cedars and you're going to be watching animals for signs of heat, probably when you pull cedars is when you're going to want to put on either Kmar heat detectors or AI alerts. Even if you're not AI breeding, you're going to want to know when those animals come into heat and these are easy ways to identify that. Your Kmar kit comes with the glue included. These are self-adhesive. Other supplies you don't want to forget, make sure you have an adequate supply of gloves. It's always rough to run out of gloves in the middle of either AI breeding, pregnancy checking, anything like that. You always want to make sure you have lots of gloves and you want to make sure you have lots of lube. This is just one brand that we have. We have several varieties of lube for your needs. Some other items that you might want to go ahead and order early are your pregnancy detection kits. We have one for cattle and for sheep and goats. You want to go ahead and get those ahead of time. Nothing worse than deciding today's a really good day to preg check animals because they're all up close where you can get samples from them and you don't have your preg check kits. Um, some other basic supplies that I was thinking of, and these are not things that we offer, but things that you might want to print off the internet. Um, you might want to print a gestation table for your certain species. It was pretty easy to Google and find one for cattle, goat, and sheep. That way you can look and see, is this really when I want my animals to be born? You know, what's my best market? When I want my calves, kids? lambs to be born as far as when you're going to market them later. The other thing that I printed out was just a really simple, what I call breeding sheet. It has animal ID. You can mark down the dates that your animal was bred and the result. And the result can be whether you preg check your animal at so many days or when their offspring are born later on. And then you have a nice organized sheet. I just wrote at the bottom that it's the 2019 breeding season. Later on, I can just file that away. If there's ever any questions about who was bred to who, you can go back to that. So the other thing that I put on the breeding sheet is there's a column um, for three different breedings. I don't know how long you leave your males out in the herd. Um, 
you know, that would cover easily a 90 day breeding season. And you can look, you know, has she been bred three times? Have I seen her stand three times? Have I never seen her come into heat? That's another thing that you can use to base culling decisions on. You know, if she's not showing a heat, is there a reason why she's not showing a heat? I went to all this trouble to put in cedars and give prostaglandin shots and, you know, that's a lot of money and a lot of time. Your time is that time that's being well spent. So you might want to have a vet come in and check and see those animals that didn't show a heat. Um, you know, are they not cycling? That kind of thing. Again, something you can base your culling decisions on. I usually keep these on a clipboard in the barn. That way if I'm out feeding, doing something, and I see the bull or the ram or the buck getting busy, I can write down what day he was breeding who.